for years. Agura Ward has served in different capacities, including a stint as ICT minister. He has now retired to his country home in Wujiri district, eastern Uganda. The political scientist and an economist also studied journalism and was director of Uganda Television, UTV, in the 1960s. Awori says this position put his life at a risk. At the time, Amin ousted Dr. Milton Obote in a military coup. And I was the first journalist or media person to be arrested during the coup of January 25th, 1971. That nearly ended my life, except that I had known Amin for some time, we been interacting. He saved me out of his masses. As boss at UTV, Award was privy to the information about the coup, and that is what saved his life. Amin knew that I had been, he had been planning the coup, and I was aware, although I had alerted Obote, but Obote didn't take it seriously until he overthrew. So Amin said, if this man can keep my secret, I better save him. He remembers that there were many soldiers who were after his life, but Amin wanted him alive. And he advised the late General Nyangweso to organize escort for me clandestinely to escape to Kenya. In politics, there are no permanent friends or enemies. I will join the other forces to have Amin removed from power. Now, after Amin, of course, we tried to overthrow him on September 16th, 1972, but it was a in that uh, the planned invasion did not work out. The former politician recalls that even with 1980 general elections being organized, Yoweri Museveni had already planned to go to the bush. We knew it. And some of us tried to bargain with Obote that we bring Museveni into the government and contain him. Because he, in the bush, without our control, anything can happen. Because we have seen how he works. But somehow some people will not allow that, say no. There was even a famous statement uh, attributed to Obote that we shall find him in the bush and leave him there. Agra Ward was sent to Washington as ambassador, then to Brazos as a special representative to the European Union. My job was really to buy guns. <laughs> Arms, security. Award says Obote turned against people he was working with because the forces around him misled him. He adds that if Obote had listened to advice, he would have stayed in government a little longer. Tito was leaving, was very angry. He called me up in Washington. He said, I have been trying to see your friend. He used to call Obote my friend, but he won't see me. Tell him if he doesn't see me by lunchtime, I'm going. I called Obote, I told him. He said, ah, he just, those are threats. Let him go. That was the last time Tito was in Kampala. He only came back as president. While Obote was in exile, Awari visited him, asking him to try UPC forces to host Tito Kelo. Obote declined. I just wanted to make sure that UNLA soldiers, and especially of long origin UPC sympathies, were not hurt, and especially Easterners. Mm. Mm, and that's how the problem started. And that's how I fell out again with the, with the, with M7. And when he fell out with President William M7 in the late 80s, he left the country. Where you are sitting now, this house, you, NRA occupied it when I was in exile. A short time later, our met President Museveni and former Minister Jim Muhezi in transit to Brazil, and a reconciliation took place. Our returned to Uganda and became a member of the Constituent Assembly, representing Samyabugwe North. He represented the same constituency in the sixth parliament on the UPC ticket until he was voted out. 
It came as a surprise when he was appointed Minister for ICT in the NRM government. I can assure you, and I can tell anybody in the opposition, it's very, very hard to get any resources for development of a particular area or particular sector of the economy as long as you are waving an opposition flag. Were there any benefits that came with his joining the NRM? Oh, number one, I was able to get municipality for my town, Busia. Number two, uh, earlier on, I was able to get Busia as a district. Our says many Ugandans are poor. One of the signs of this poverty, he says, are the huge shopping malls in the city. These people who are controlling money in the country have not, divert, have not invested it in the productive sector of the economy, which would have employed more people, which would have allowed more people to have access to good life. Now retired, he's a livestock farmer and involved in community development. Agnes Nandutu, NTV, Living History.